It was tempting to try to intertwine the different people's goals in this final uh, scenario of outdoor survival, but it, I thought doing so would pit them against each other and set, instead of the outdoors. And so I tried to do it in a way so that they were somewhat interconnected, but still it was more about them and the outdoors than anything else. So let's take a look at what their goals are. So do you know if he survived? Will you tell me if, if you know if he survived? It's Demi. Did he survive or not? We'll start with Mooney. Mooney's a seafaring adventurer who loves boats for some reason. So he is, his goal is just to traverse the river. And this is gonna not be a very exciting one. He doesn't have to roll to move. I, I did decide he's, the only thing he's gonna roll for is he has to roll encounters every turn. Um, just to kind of keep himself awake. Uh, Sid, she is our, she's a travel agent. So um, she's got a bundle, four bundles of brochures here that she needs to take to different cabins in the woods and leave there for travelers. She's, she's thinking that um, it's a good marketing idea because people who are out in the woods obviously love traveling and so they might need help still, they might be in the market or be willing to pay more money uh, to travel in the future. And that's where she comes in. Um, Lefty, he's a competitive person, our blue baby here. He's starting here. Oh, and she's using the survival rules. He's starting here and he just has to get across before anyone else um, meets their goal. Okay, he's using the search rule. So he's basically doing like a, the survival scenario which is just getting across the board. But um, he, uh, he gets to go a little faster. He has better rules, more favorable rules for himself. Uh, but the flip side is he, he doesn't win unless he gets across before everyone else. And then we have our um, communist agent here, Pinky. Pinky is starting here. And um, if you notice, everyone has a little, all the other players have a little face down chip thing there. Um, so basically one of them is a green chit of pinky, of pinkies, and I don't know which one it is. Um, I find it easier to uh, to be ignorant than to pretend ignorance, and so um, she has to find the one of her color, and so that represents that that person's an informant or um, has some documents for her or something or some piece of information that she can glean, and that's where we're, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing right now. Let's roll to see who goes first, because it kind of matters. Um, Pinky, Mooney, Sid, Lefty. Okay, Lefty and Sid roll off. Sid gets a six, Lefty gets a three, it'll be Sid, and then we'll go clockwise around. Suppose we should check in. Sid's doing really well for her survival rules. Um, she's almost made it to the first cabin where she can uh, leave a bundle of pamphlets. Lefty also has gotten off to a good start. Um, almost halfway across the board, he just needs to get here before anyone else meets their goal. And it looks like the scenario's kind of in his favor in that respect. The only person who could maybe, well, actually Pinky, if Pinky hits Mooney right here and Mooney has the correct chit, then Lefty's out of it. Um, Mooney had to stay still on, on the boat for a turn thought about filming it so you could experience what that was like, but I, I mercifully did not. Um, Pinky, she was hoping to meet Mooney about right here, but since he had to stay still, uh, she's not able to. I'm not sure if I said Mooney's just going to move on the water, whatever his rate is. So he, normally it, water takes three movement steps, but not for Mooney. It takes him one because he's got a boat. Um, but since he has to carry his boat around, if he leaves the water, it takes him three um, or an additional two. So if he goes into the mountains, that takes five. So it's hard to carry a boat up the mountain. Mooney and Pinky have met up right here. So we're about to see if Mooney has the special thing. And he does. Okay. So she's won already. Lefty's lost already. And we're down to a two-person game of Mooney is trying to get up the river and Sid trying to set out her pamphlets. I think she's got the harder task right now. Forgot that a lot of times she has to move in just one direction. She's had lucky rolls, so she overshot the, the cabin, and it's gonna be hard for her to get the exact roll she needs to, 
to steer. I guess steering is the issue because you can always stop at the cabin. That's a rule I, I, I decided. But we have to say goodbye to Lefty. That's too bad. I've always enjoyed playing with him. He's a great character um, and a wonderful baby. Checking back in, Sid has placed three of her bundles, so she just has to get down to cabin one here, and then she'll have placed her final bundle, and then she's succeeded. Uh, Mooney, he keeps having to be stationary on the water, um, and so it's another turn of that. He keeps rolling and adding more. We'll see what event he gets now. Um, animal insect, and that does, that's not stationary, so that's good. Let's go right in with Sid here. Six. That means she can move really well. One, two, three, four, five, six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so she lands on the food. Water index goes down. Um, Mooney's last turn of stationariness. A five and a three. He has to remain stationary another turn. His food goes down. Back to Sid. She's going to roll for movement. Six again. She's doing really well, and that'll do it for her. One, two, three, four. She gets a direction change. Or no, four, five, six, and she's not quite there. Because I think the path comes out here. Oh, but she could just leave the path, couldn't, couldn't she? Yeah. Five, six. So she's placed all of her bundles. And marketing is more important than survival, so she doesn't even really have to make it back. Um, back to Mooney. Take that off. Event five, three. He has to remain stationary another turn. And we'll just keep going with him. Four. Gain two food. One, two. And he's no longer stationary, so now he can move. One, two, three, four, five, six. He passed through food there. Oh, last turn he would have lost food. And then roll for his event. One, that's natural hazard, and no natural hazard. He's almost at one, two, three, four, five, six. Whew. That's animal insect. And lose one step food. So he loses two food, goes down to this, but that's gonna, he still has enough to complete his outdoor adventure. Both Mooney and Sid are survived. And that's going to do it for our game of outdoor survival, which has gone on for quite some time. Um, can't say I'm sad to be done playing it for now. I feel like I've played it enough uh, for a while. But I am sad to see some of those real people go. Um, in a way, I guess, the ones that I had to say goodbye to now, I had kind of more time with them to say goodbye versus the ones that I'm going to have to say goodbye to in the next game, Careers. Because uh, that game has, let's count the cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-five players in it. And there's only going to be two people progressing out of that game. So that's going to be 33 drop like that that are going to go back to that same pile that those that did not survive the wilderness now are in. Um, yeah, I, I, it was fun to play outdoor survival that way. I enjoyed being able to tinker with scenarios and just kind of trying them out and just seeing what happened. Um, not a lot else to say about that. I'm going to just thought it'd be nice as sort of a eulogy for the game and for those that have passed to just open up to a page here. And I have not selected the page. I keep opening up to the same page, though. Here, we'll do this one. Um, shoulder dislocation. The head of the arm bone is obviously out of place and can be displaced forward or backward. Reduced dis reduce dislocation is shown. Hold arm in place with a desalt bandage. See illustration. Keep immobilized for three weeks. Dislocated jaw. The jaw is held open and a prominence can be felt on the side where the jaw is dislocated. The dislocation may occur on both sides. 
Reduce by wrapping the thumbs well in a towel. Oh, I think I'm in, I'm in a different area there. Oh, I see. It, it continues at the top of the page. No? I don't know where the... I guess that's the end of dislocated jaw. I don't know what this is. We'll go to hip dislocation. Reduce by the four maneuvers shown in the drawing. Then splint the leg for ten days. Let's go to one more page. Killing game. Practice is contrary both to game regulations and sportsmanship are justified by the law of survival. One of these generally forbidden practices is jacking, in part the act of attacking or tracting and holding an animal's eyes at night by the beam of a light. Deer can often be spotted and held in this fashion long enough to be shot. Likely places for jacking are the downwind sides of well-used game trails and water holes. It is sometimes possible to drive a small animal from its burrow by smoking it out or pouring water into the hole. The animal may come within reach of a club or the opening may be such that the creature can be impaled on a barbed pole or secured by twisting a forked stick into its hair and skin. If this doesn't work, try digging. Or spread a noose in front of the hole, hide nearby, and jerk the loop tight when the quarry ventures out. The sluggish porcupine is the one animal that even the greenest and weakest tenderfoot can kill with only a stick. To do so, just reach over the animal, which usually presents the raised quills of back and tail, and strike it on the head. The best way to skin a porcupine is first to turn it over and make the initial incision along the smooth underside. Rabbits are also easy to kill. In the spring, the young lie so fearlessly that all a person has to do is reach down and pick the youngster up. Adult rabbits depend on such, uh, so much on camouflage that if you pretend not to see one and continue strolling as if going past, it is frequently possible to come close enough to hit it with a stone. Right, with that, we'll end. Thanks.